Welcome to Engineering Studio with Dr. Muhammad Tahir. In this video, we are going to study about the eccentrically loaded footing. We will study what will be the contact pressure under the eccentrically loaded isolated footings. If axial load as well as bending movement is being transferred to the footing from the column, then the load is considered to be acting at an eccentricity to the centroid of footing. So, previously we have studied that only axial load is being transferred from the column to the foundation or footing but if there act the bending moment along with the axial load so in that case it can be considered in that case it, it can be considered that the axial load is acting at some eccentricity from the centroid of the column or centroid of the footing so if this is so, so in that case the pressure under this footing will not be uniform as we have considered in case of axially loaded footing without the bending moment. So in that case pressure, contact pressure under the footing will not be uniform. The eccentricity of the load can be about one axis or it can be about both the axis. So if it is along the x axis for example load is acting on x axis at some distance from the centroid so we can say we have eccentricity only along x axis or otherwise if the load is acting at some distance from the neutral axis along y axis so we can say we have only eccentricity ey on y axis so mean if the load is or the bending moment is about x axis so in that case the eccentricity E will be about y axis or on y axis. So E will be EY. And if M is MY mean movement about the y axis, so in that case E will be EX. Mean eccentricity along x axis. And if the load is of the bending movement MX as well as MY exists so in that case we will have eccentricity along x axis as well as eccentricity along y axis so the soil pressure under a footing is calculated by the assumption that linear elastic action in compression exists under the footing but no tensile strength across the contact between the footing and the soil so in case of footing actually when the footing is resting on the soil so there is no bond between the footing and the soil so only the load is resisted by the compression but if there is a tension between the soil and the footing so in that case the resistance will not be provided under tension so we only consider the resistance in compression in case of footings so if the column load is applied at or near the middle of the footing the stress q under the footing can be calculated by using this formula so here if we see p over a is the stress because of the axial load p divided by the area of the footing and this is the stress produced because of the bending moment and it is given by my over i it is the fluxual stress produced by the bending moment under the footing so if we see so in case of axial compression load so we will have a constant value of our uniform value of stress which is equal to p over a and because of y bending moments so we will have a stress under the footing it will be linear on one side it will be in compression and on the other side it will be in tension mean on this side it will be downward and on this side it will be upward so if we combine these two so on one side these will be added up but on the other side these will be subtracted so p over a plus minus m y over i or we can say q is equal to p over a plus m y over i on one side and q is equal to p over a minus m y over i on the other side so on one side we will have the plus component on the other side we will have the negative component so here on this side it will be negative so we will have the minimum pressure on this side and the maximum pressure on this side so if the column load is applied within the curve the shaded area in figure it will cause compression over the entire area of the footing so first we need to 
know about the kern of the area so if the eccentricity of the load is along x axis and the eccentricity is less than l by 6 this is the total length l so l by 6 at this point so in that case the pressure under this footing will be positive the whole footing will be under compression or the contact pressure will be compressive in nature and similarly if the eccentricity on this side and at the value of eccentricity is less than l by 6 so again the pressure will be positive under the footing and similarly if on this side along the y axis and its value is less than b over 6 be the width of the section or the width of, width of the footing so again if the load or the eccentricity of load is less than b over 6 then the pressure will be positive so on we can have these four points on x axis and y axis if the eccentricity is less than that then we can say the pressure under the footing will be positive and if we have the eccentricity along both the axes at the same time mean the eccentricity we have eccentricity value along x axis as well as along y axis so in that case the load will act at some distance in between these two axes mean the first quadrant second third or fourth so if we join these points corresponding to l over 6 and b over 6 on x and y axis then the area in between these lines shown as a shaded area if the load act at this area then the pressure under this footing will be positive and the whole area of the footing will be under compression but if the load act at some distance away from this shaded area so in that case some part of the footing will be under tension and some part will be under compression for example if the load act at this point then the area on this side some area on this side will be under tension so this shaded area is termed as the curve and if load act within this curve then the pressure under the footing will be positive okay if the eccentricity of the load is zero so in that case we will have the case similar to the concentrically loaded column or we can say we will have a concentrically loaded column and the pressure under this footing will be uniform and it will be equal to p over a and we can say it is the average pressure but if the eccentricity of the load is more than zero but less than ek ek is equal to l over 6 or b over 6 if eccentricity is less than ek so in that case on one side we will have pressure greater than p over a but on the other side we will have pressure less than p over a and if the eccentricity is equal to ek l over 6 or b over 6 so in that case on one side we will have pressure equal to 2 times q average but on the other side the pressure will be zero because here p over a plus minus m y over i so on this side we will have p over a minus m y over i and both p a and m y over i have the same values so their net will be equal to zero and on this side we will have the positive component and as both have equal values so it will become double of p over a the average contact pressure so similarly if the eccentricity value is more than ek so in that case some part of the footing will be under tension so we will have the contact pressure on one side more than the two time p over a and on the other side the contact pressure will be negative or in tension so we can ignore that so we will have the distribution like this Okay, if we want to calculate the area of the footing so we will try to avoid this case when the eccentricity is greater than ek so to avoid this case that eccentricity should not exceed ek we can increase the value of length as we go on increasing the value of length it means l over 6 value goes on increasing and we can enhance this length in such a way that e is less than l over 6 so in that case and in this way we can avoid this negative pressure under the footing and we can have either this case or this case okay if we want to calculate the area of footing so previously when the 
load was concentric so in that case we use the limitation of bearing failure so to avoid the bearing failure the applied pressure q we can say q it should be less than q allowable so rq net allowable so q here is given by p service load divided by area of the footing and it should be less than q net or if we rearrange this equation so we can get area of footing should be greater than p over q net so by using this expression we can estimate the area of footing when the load is concentric in case of eccentric loads or in case of footing with the eccentricity of load so the pressure will be non uniform so on one side we will have the larger value of pressure and on the other side the pressure will be less so to satisfy the bearing failure criteria we need to consider the largest value of the pressure under the footing because if the value of the pressure at this edge where the pressure is larger exceed the bearing capacity so the failure will occur at that point so we need to ensure that q maximum should be less than q net q net allowable or allowable bearing capacity net allowable bearing capacity of the soil so to satisfy that the q maximum here will be equal to p over a plus m y over i and it should be less than q net so from here we can find the value of a we can write the a in terms of b into l and i will also be written in the form of b into l y will can also be written in the form of b r l so here we will have two unknowns so we can get the value of one out of these two so we can assume the value of one for example we can assume the value of b and then we can calculate the value of l or otherwise if we have rectangular footing then we can assume the ratio that length over width ratio we can assume for example it is 1.2 so from here we can say that l is equal to 1.2 time b and we can replace here l with the 1.2b so at the location of l or in place of l we can write 1.2b so in that case we will get the expression in terms of b only and we can get the b value once we have the b value then by using this ratio we can calculate the l value so in this manner we can proportion our footing when it is subjected to eccentrically load or eccentric load